Hi folks, welcome to this video on adaptations to strength training, one of four videos to do with strength training. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at very briefly, you know, should you do a lot of strength training, what are there going to be adaptations to your neural pathways, i.e. the brain and its connection to the muscles? What are you going to do to your muscles themselves and your connective tissue, things like ligaments and tendons? And also, what's it going to do to your metabolism, your metabolic function, the rate at which we burn calories? What I would say is, it's well worth knowing that, you know, to see adaptations to these three systems, we're looking at strength training for two to five times a week for at least 12 weeks. Then we're going to start to see changes. Anything less than that, and we're not going to see any of these adaptations. So firstly, the neural pathways. Like I mentioned that, you know, the brain, the part of the brain that's responsible for controlling muscular movement is called the cerebellum. So what we're talking about in terms of neural pathways is what is happening to the connections between the brain and the muscles in order that we can contract them more forcefully or anything like that. Well, first things first, you may remember back when we looked at structure of motor units and things like that. You know, a motor unit is a neuron that comes from the brain on the cerebellum. And, you know, he's attached to maybe a thousand muscle fibres and we call that entire thing a motor unit. Well, what we're going to do is through training, we're going to increase the re uh, recruitment of motor units, i.e. we're going to send impulses down more motor units, which means we're going to switch on more muscle fibres. If each motor unit consists of a thousand muscle fibres and you've got a hundred thousand muscle fibres in uh, your quadricep, let's say, there must be a hundred motor units controlling your quadricep. Each motor unit is in charge of a thousand fibres. If I can recruit more of those motor units, I will recruit and switch on or activate more muscle fibres. And as a result, I'm going to produce a greater force contraction. Uh, and what I will also do through strength training is actually recruit more fast twitch muscle fibres, fast glycolytic and fast oxidative glycolytic. And remember, those are the muscle fibre types that are twice as thick as type 1 fibres Therefore, they produce higher levels of force. So again, greater force production. You may have already watched it. You may know something about this already. You may not. Decreased inhibition of the stretch reflex. So what, like that was linked to our plyometrics training. What that was, just to quickly recap, is if you stretch a muscle and then you let it contract, it will produce more force if you pre-stretch the muscle. It works on that rubber band hypothesis. You stretch a rubber band fully, then let it go. It will really twang with more force. I'm going to make better use, so I'm going to decrease inhibition of the stretch reflex. In other words, I'm going to make better use of the stretch reflex. Again, I'm going to get greater force of contraction by the agonist, the muscle that is contracting. So that's very, very important for explosive uh, muscular, uh, explosive strength, i.e. power. So now to the muscular system and all the connective tissue, relatively straightforward. Obviously, I'm going to get hypertrophy. My muscles are going to increase in their cross-sectional area. They're going to become bigger in, you know, more common sense language, therefore going to have increased force production. But also, there's something called hyperplasia, hyperplasia, however you want to pronounce it. Hypertrophy says that, let's say you've got 10,000 muscle fibres inside your bicep. Hypertrophy means each one of those muscle fibres is going to get bigger and thicker. Whereas hyperplasia is actually an increase in the number of muscle fibres. So you might go from 10,000 muscle fibres in your bicep to 12,000. Well, each one of those is going to get bigger. And again, it's going to, you know, the result of both of them happening is going to be greater muscle size and an increase in force production. Linked, I mean, the, the award these apparently separate marks in the mark scheme. And, you know, these, this myofibrils definitely links to these. Myofibrils make up muscle fibres. So you might think the muscle fibre is the smallest thing. Actually, each muscle fibre is made up of lots of myofibrils. And they're the things that are made of protein. So the reason why we eat protein or we eat more protein to bulk up or try and put on muscle mass, you're going to increase the size of each of your myofibrils, which is then ultimately going to increase the size of your muscle fibres. And that's going to lead to great force production. So, you know, hypertrophy, the muscle fibre gets bigger. Hyperplasia, you increase the number of muscle fibres. And within, within both of those myofibrils, they're going to increase in size and thickness as well. Coming away from the muscles, we're going to have increased strength of ligaments and tendons. Remember, ligaments hold bones to bones, tendons hold muscle to bones. So the tendons have got to get stronger because the muscles are getting stronger and it's the tendon that holds the muscle to the bone. We don't want the tendon ripping itself clear of the bone. And also, if the muscles are producing more force, they're producing bigger actions at the joints so more powerful actions at the joints. So we need stronger ligaments to make sure that joint stays safe so we get better joint stability and a reduced injury risk, 
and then finally linking that in at the joints the joints are made of bones aren't they so we're also going to get increased bone density through strength training increased bone density and mass so we're going to put more calcium down into the bones they're going to become stronger as well and finally then very quickly what is the impact of resistance training strength training on your metabolism well you, you may remember these from other videos if you've watched them all earlier on in your course phosphocreatine was the energy source that you can use for up to 10 seconds when you're working maximally and we, we said about a 100 meter sprinter uh, using pc stalls to get them through their event you're going to increase the amount of phosphocreatine in your muscles so that you know that energy source will lengthen so you might get 11 or 12 seconds uh, more energy out of that system we're also going to store more glycogen remember glucose and glycogen that's an energy source that we use whether we're working aerobically or anaerobically so we're going to get more energy increased energy source we can work at higher intensities within that enzymes break things down enzymes break down pc enzymes break down glucose and glycogen so we can break them down quicker we can get the energy from them quicker so we're also going to increase the amount of enzymes so we're going to be able to break pc and glycogen down quicker and get the energy from it quicker we're also going to increase something called buffering capacity what is buffering it's a thing for neutralizing or wiping out basically you've all probably experienced this build up of lactic acid that stinging burning substance when you're working at high intensities that makes your muscles you know increases the pain in your muscles you're going to be able to tolerate it and remove it more the more high intensity training you do the more you build up lactic acid and the better the body becomes at buffering it i.e tolerating it and removing it and finally we're going to get an increase in muscle mass as we've just mentioned previously but what's that going to do with metabolism well the more muscles i have the more calories i will burn and therefore the more i will keep a leaner body i will keep my body fat levels down so there are the three systems and the adaptations to strength training on all three of them Hope you found this video useful, folks.